everybody. Hope you're doing well. I had a request to do a video on bending radius requirements of the 2020 NEC. So I decided we'd do a quick little video and talk about what the NEC requires as far as bending radius is concerned. Now, it's important that we understand that there's requirements for conductors, individual conductors, and there's requirements for cable assemblies. But it's a little bit surprising because the NEC does not have a bending radius requirement for individual conductors rated 1,000 volts or less. Uh, if I have a piece of THHN or XHHW, how tightly can I bend that conductor? Uh, the fact is the NEC does not address that, not for 1,000 volts and less. Uh, once you get over 1,000 volts and you get into medium voltage situations, then you'll go to section 300.34 and you'll find that there are some requirements for medium voltage conductors, but there are no requirements for bending radius of 1,000 volt and less installations. Uh, sections like 312.6 do exist, and Article 312, of course, is the article that covers uh, cabinets, cutout boxes, and meter socket enclosures, and it gives some sizing requirements for the enclosure, but once you have installed the correct size enclosure and punched your knockouts the right distance away from the terminals, uh, how you install the conductors is not addressed in the NEC, so we do not have bending radius uh, requirements for individual conductors. Uh, now, as always, manufacturers could have requirements, so I don't want to say that you can just take, you know, your, your THHN and tie it in a knot or anything. I'm not saying that you can necessarily do that because the manufacturer might have requirements. And if that's the case, then we go back to section 110.3b, which is installation and use, and that section, of course, tells us that if your equipment is listed or labeled or both, uh, then the equipment must be installed and used in accordance with any listing or manufacturer's instructions. So, yeah, if the manufacturer says that there's a, a bending radius requirement, then we need to follow it. When it comes to cables, that's where the NEC really has something to say. And when I say cable, I mean like AC cable and MC cable, NM cable. So, for cable bending, uh, radi for cable bending radius requirements, you want to go to the dot .24 section of the applicable article, so 330.24 if you're doing MC cable or uh, 338.24 if you're doing SE cable. And I'm going to, to be perfectly honest with you here. When I first really started geeking out and becoming a code nerd, uh, bending radius was something that I had a hard time understanding. Uh, I'm not going to lie, and I had a much, a very hard time teaching it because I just couldn't visualize it. When it says that, that the cable has to be bent with a minimum radius of, of five times or seven times the diameter of the cable, I had a hard time wrapping my head around that, and, and I don't think I'm the only one. And credit where it's due, a friend of mine named Russ LeBlanc, who uh, writes for ECNM, and uh, he's an instructor out of Massachusetts, he mentioned something that I thought was profound, and I stole it, and I've been running with it ever since. Uh, he introduced me to the idea of visualizing a round object, like a ball, to make the requirements easier to digest. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So. Let's take NM cable, 334.24 for example, and again, any of the .24 sections in articles 320 through 340 could be used. But for NM cable, it says bends must not damage the cable sheath. All right, so that in and of itself is a requirement. So we're not allowed to, to damage the cable. If we keep reading, it says the inner radius of the curve of a bend must be at least five times the diameter of the cable. And that's when my head would explode. I didn't have a clue what that meant. I mean, I know what a radius is, and I know what diameter is, but I just couldn't, you know, take a look at this picture here. Let me get my uh, laser pointer out. So for this uh, orange cable, is that five times the diameter? I had a really hard time with that. What Russ pointed out is that if you can visualize it bending around a round object, it's much, much more clear. So here I've got some 14.2 NM cable, and the diameter is 0 0.17 inches. Now, when we say the diameter, I have a drawer full of cable here. Uh, when we say the diameter, how do we measure that? Are we measuring the, the thickness from 
you know, the, the skinny edge, or are we doing it lengthwise along the long edge? Because a diameter is, is a property of a round item, and this is elliptical. In my opinion, it's measured on the short uh, dimension. And the reason for that is if you're bending it that way along the short dimension, then it's the thickness of the cable, not the width, that really comes into play. So if I'm, if I'm bending it like we have in the photograph here, does it really matter if it's a flat cable? Would it matter if it was 14.2 or 14.3? Or, or let's just make something up. What if it was 14 gauge and there were like 10 wires inside of the cable? Would the width of the cable really affect how tight I can bend it? I don't think so. I think that's the thickness of the cable that determines that, right? So your bending radius would change whether it's 14.2 or 12.2 or 10.2, right? Because it's the thickness of the cable and not the width. Now, again, that's my opinion. The code doesn't specify, but that's my opinion. So there you go. That's my bending radius. So I'm going to take the thickness of the cable and then I'm going to multiply it by at least five times the diameter. Okay, so I went on to a website, and I'm sure this has probably changed since I got this information, but I just, I logged on to, uh, I don't remember if it was Southwire or Sarah Wire, whoever it was, and I got their specifications for some various NM cables. So their 14.2 cable here, uh, the diameter is 0.17 by 0.39, or the dimensions, pardon me. Uh, their 10.2 is, you know, 0.21 times uh, 0.493. So I'm going to take that number and I'm going to figure out the bending radius. If it's five times the diameter of the cable, then I'm going to take my 1.7 and multiply that by five, and that leaves me a radius of 0.85. Now remember that the radius is half of a ball, right? So the diameter is 1.7. So in other words, if I need a 0 0.5, 0 0.85 bending radius, then I need to be able to bend it around an object that has a diameter of twice that. So a golf ball is 1.7 inches in diameter. And that just happens to work out brilliantly because the diameter of this 14.2 cable is 0.17. So if I can bend the cable around a golf ball, then I have satisfied the requirement. If I bend it tighter than a golf ball, then I have violated the requirement. And, and you might be able to see the, the damage, how the cable sheath is starting to kink. And that's what we're trying to prevent. And that's why, in my opinion, we use the thickness of the cable when we're applying that dimension because that's where the point is going to fail. So we're not protecting the contained conductors, we're protecting the cable jacket itself. And as you might expect, the requirements for bending MC cable are going to be a little bit more stringent because if I were to bend MC cable really tight, the cable is going to snap, right? The, the metal interlocking metal tape is going to break apart and we're not going to have you know, a cohesive wiring method anymore. So I found that it really helps to visualize a ball when you're doing your bending radius requirements. And I actually went through and came up with some examples of different round objects. So 14.2 and 12.2, you know, they're about 1 point, uh, 0.17 or 0.16, and that's a golf ball. For 10.2, that would be about a tennis ball. So as long as I've got enough room on my cable to bend it around a tennis ball, then I would comply. So here we have some 12-2. As we know, if I can bend it around a golf ball, then we're okay. Any tighter than that would be a violation. So if you had to make a U-turn with your NM cable, we need to make sure you can still put a golf ball inside of it. If you can't, then that would be a violation. We've bent it too tightly. So going back, for some various uh, some various dimensions here, you know, if you've got a, a 12 3 and it's a, a round cable, then I actually need to be able to bend that around a softball, not a golf ball. And of course, if I had like two gauge conductors, you know, two three gauge con or uh, <laughs> two gauge conductors with three in there, uh, that would require me to bend it around a basketball. Another example here, uh, SE cable, service entrance cable. If I have a one inch diameter SE cable, 
the requirements for USE and SE cable is five times the bending radius. So if I've got a one inch diameter and I need five times the radius, then that's going to require a 10 inch ball. So if I can visualize bending that around a basketball, that would be compliant. But if I'm doing it any tighter than that, then that would be a violation. So there you go. I hope that helps you. Uh, I know, like I said before, I had a hard time fully understanding this when I was first starting, and I know I can't possibly be the only one. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.